Hello and welcome to another episode of Our Longevity Weekly with me, Chris Kerwin. And today we're going to be talking about three more fascinating topics. The DNA mutations that occur within our cells. I'll talk with Matt Cablin from the Dog Aging Project and also the link between walking and cognition. But firstly, we're introducing a new segment, the News in Brief, where I give you the lowdown of the latest headlines from the world of longevity. Firstly, this might sound very much like science fiction, but a new company, Colossal, has received $15 million to carry out their mission of de-extincting the woolly mammoth. The gene therapy company, led by George Church, plans to emulate the woolly mammoth by genetically editing elephant DNA. Now these ancient creatures were thought to be incredibly important in maintaining the arctic tundra, and the team states that bringing them back may help slow the deterioration of this ecosystem due to climate change. Now everyone knows the famous Nobel Prizes, the esteemed awards which highlight the most groundbreaking discoveries in the world of science. But the Ick Nobel Prizes are a little less known. These are awards that are given out to research that first makes you laugh and then makes you think. Some of the winners of the 2021 Ig Nobel Prizes includes research that showed by measuring the levels of compounds in a packed out cinema, you could tell if the film was either violent or erotic or even had an abundance of foul language. Now I'll leave the link in the description below for you to go and check out the roundup of the winners. It's well worth doing. And finally, the Google offshoot Verily has recently assembled an all-star team of executives to bring its software and data tools to the market. They include Amy Abernethy, formerly a top data and informatics leader at the FDA, and Stephen Gillett, previously an executive at Best Buy and Starbucks, who is now Verily's chief operating officer. These new members will help push products to help speed up drug discovery and development, advance research in genomics and immunology, and help drive the modernization of clinical trials. So those were some of the major headlines this week from the world of longevity. I hope you enjoyed that, and now it's on to the main segments. So firstly, genetic mutations are something which occur in every living organism on this planet. From the day that you are conceived until the day that you die, it is estimated that a million mutations occur every single day. But if so many of these mutations are occurring, and they're meant to be bad for us, why aren't we dead yet? Whilst the wrong combination of mutations can lead to cancer, the vast majority are harmless. And although most mutations don't do any damage, they are still there to stay. Once a mutation slips through the net, that mutation will be passed on to daughter cells during cell division. This means that as we age, not only are our cells more likely to bear mutations that prime them to become cancerous, but our cells also become more and more genetically dissimilar from each other. Even mutations that aren't precancerous are thought to negatively affect the function of cells and tissues and thereby contribute to the ageing process. The occurrence of mutations has been mostly studied in cancers and less is known about the occurrence of mutations in non-cancerous tissues throughout the body. This is what researchers set out to study in a paper published in Genome Biology. The study confirmed that the rate at which these genetic mutations occur is different in different tissues. Certain tissues, including the skin for example, experience a higher number of mutations due to factors such as exposure to the external environment or high cell turnover. Gender and ethnicity also affected mutation rates in some tissues. For example, some mutations in adipose or fat tissue or liver and even adrenal gland tissue were more common amongst females. But researchers didn't find any mutations that were significantly more common in males. Now the study goes on to discuss why these mutations occur at different rates throughout the body and reveals genetic changes during ageing that precede the development of cancer. So please go and check out Alex's article on it, if not the full study, as it's well worth a read. A couple of weeks ago, Avi and Laura Minkini were joined by Matt Cablin for the first of the Let's Talk Pet Longevity series. Now Matt is a professor from the University of Washington where his research focuses on the basic mechanisms of understanding aging. He's also the co-director of the Dog Aging Project, a long-term study committed to advancing our understanding of aging 
and trying to push through medical breakthroughs for both dogs and humans. Why the dogs is such a good model to prove to prove some of it, to study and then to prove some of these uh, trials on before moving to humans? Because can you explain this? I think for some people it is obvious, but it is important that people know. Sure. Yeah. So I, I, there are a lot. There are actually lots of reasons, but I think some of the big ones are. First of all, from a, a public recognition of the field perspective, I, I think that this has a huge potential, right? I think it, all of us in the field recognize that among the general public, most people don't have an understanding of where the biology of aging is today. I think, honestly, most of the general public still thinks of it as science fiction or snake oil. And there are a lot of reasons for that, but I think that's just a fact. And and I think that it's much, it, it, if we're successful at understanding aging and ultimately having a clinically demonstrated intervention that increases lifespan and health span in pet dogs, I think that'll really be a watershed moment for the field. And, and it will really shift the way that the general public views aging biology. I think it's going to be much easier for people to understand that aging is actually malleable once we can do it in their pets. So I think that's that's not a biological reason, reason for why dogs are, are, are a great uh, model and opportunity, but I think it's a really important one for the future of the, of the field. So a massive thanks to Matt again for that fascinating talk. If you want to go and check out the full version, then you can click on the link below. Now, finally, the last thing we're going to talk about is a really interesting study out of Stanford, which looked at the association of walking with improved cognitive function and creative thinking. Now, we've all been in the situation where we're trying to make a difficult decision or you're stuck with a task and you're in desperate need of inspiration. Eventually, you decide to go for a walk to clear your head. And by the time your walk was over, you knew exactly how to solve your problem. Well, this is exactly what a group of Stanford researchers wanted to put to the test. Is the stroll-induced brain-boosting phenomenon a myth, or is there some real science behind it? To do this, they gathered 176 students, who they split up into two different groups, who were made to either walk or to be pushed in a wheelchair along a path. After this, they were made to perform various cognitive tests designed to assess creative thinking. The results show that those students who walked saw an improvement of around 60% in these cognitive tasks compared to the group that were taken around in a wheelchair. However, walking isn't the only form of exercise to be associated with improved short and long-term cognitive function. Evidence suggests that exercise in general improves cognition and memory. Now, more research is still needed to tease out the mechanisms behind these relationships. For now, perhaps the most important lesson is not that walking boosts your brain power, but that exercise needn't be strenuous to have an impact on cerebral health. And that is it for another episode of Longevity Weekly, so I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to go and find out more about anything that I was talking about today, then I will leave all of the links in the description below. And you can also go to the Gowing Life website, gowinglife.com, where you can check out all the latest articles, such as the 101 Aging Facts, and also an article about how melatonin protects your brain against aging. So go and check it out. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.